pieces to that a little differently today. One of them is I want to ask you, how many of you like to see your money double? If I, if I go, hey, you can double your money. And sure thing, how many of you would like that idea? Well, I happen to have one of those. I do, I really do. Um, the parking lot out there, you know, we, we made progress. Uh, the report yesterday was we raised so far about 23,000 some odd. Some odd. And remember, we had some people help kickstart that at the beginning and all. And I think the total bill, we, we, we made some little changes at the end. But it sounded like the total bill is going to be around 36, 37,000 maybe. Um, and so we got a little bit more that we're going to have to pull out or some people get finished in places. But I had a surprise call this week. I had somebody completely different uh, call and say, we'd like to offer a challenge for the congregation. We would donate up to $5,000 in matching money, dollar for dollar, for anything the congregation donates that for finishing up the parking lot. So if you put in a dollar today, it's going to be worth $2 for the parking lot. And we're going to do this, I don't know exactly when we'll cut it off. Uh, it'll either be like the I think it'll be the end of September, might be the middle of September. We've got a few weeks so you can think about it and, and get over there. But anything you give between now and the time we get this little matching thing will be worth twice as much. Now, it doesn't double the money in your pocket, but it does double your investment. So it counts. Um, and you know, I, I, was at, we were, I was listening as they were talking yesterday and added up and thought, gosh, if we, if we get enough to match that, 5,000, that's 10,000, we'll have it almost completely paid for. And that's kind of cool. And especially when you consider how many people we've lost, you know, to death in recent years and people moving away and, and uh, COVID changes and everything else, you know, we're doing okay. We aren't doing everything that we might could have done because COVID shuts us up down. But I, I feel like God's really helping our church. And I was very excited about this. Um, and I meant to bring my check. We're, we're going to put some in right off the back and I'll go. But I forgot to bring it over so that I didn't like get it. Um, but I encourage you to consider that. And we're going to have a little chart up here to keep track. If you were watching the um, video ahead of time, there's like a little picture of a parking lot. Well, the parking lot's got like 10 spaces in it. And we're going to fill up cars as we fill up the space. So each week you'll be able to keep track of the progress as we get there. So I think that's neat news. Uh, I, want, I wanted to save it for now because I thought we need to head on the video because some people are going to be watching it a different way. The other thing that I say till now is that we have a couple that I'd like to have come up here today, and that's Ribbon and Right Sir, for a minute. Yeah, I, yeah, Linda's looking at me. You didn't tell me you were going to do this. Um, I did, I just didn't say how. Um, they're leaving us. Uh, they were retiring, and uh, uh, they're moving out. Uh, for a while to Wyoming and go spend some time in Hawaii with their daughter and then they're going to get settled in eventually. And uh, so they're moving on in life and they've been such a blessing in so many ways here. And I always think that as a church it's important that we uh, say goodbye to God when we have the chance. And some of the people who moved away we haven't always had the chance but sometimes we have. And so I'd like us to have a special prayer for them uh, blessing as they move to this next stage of their life. And uh, Knowing them, I'm sure it wants to share some words back. So we'll see. Let's bow together. Almighty God, we come before you with hearts filled with thanksgiving, but also hearts filled with a bit of loss. We're thankful for all the things that have been done in our midst and, and the blessing they've been to so many. And we thank especially all the great help for Betty in recent months. But Lord, you know, Rick has been one of our leaders with the outreach to the police and fire chiefs, and he's been a great resource there for the school thing. Linda has been available for so many things and so faithful. They've been with the video program and, and just on and on, stuff they've done, and often in very quiet ways. Lord, we thank you for them. We thank you for their faith. We thank you for their example. We pray that you will bless them in this next step they take in life. Meet the needs, lead them where they need to be. Use them as you see fit. We pray especially that you'll use them as a blessing when they get out there with glory and quality with their medical concerns. That, that, that their presence be an uplift and power of your spirit in that house. Lord, watch over them and uh, help them to never forget what they've done for us and what we've done for them and how you've used them in this time. 
so that when they arrive at their next mission field, they can be used just as well there too. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> You know, when we came back the first time after COVID, one of you, and I don't remember for sure who, they were sitting in the back, said to me, I didn't realize how much going to church meant to me until I could. That's kind of the same experience there. You know, we take for granted the connections that are here and the opportunities sometimes too much. And it really is a special ministry that's here. Special people, special bond. Uh, I'll tell you what, I probably shouldn't shouldn't say this because I'm talking out of school, I guess, but, you know, Amity and I talk sometimes down in the office, and I'll tell you, there's hardly a week go by that Amity doesn't say, oh, I met so-and-so. What a nice person. What a great person. I mean, it's like, and, I, and my response is this, we've got a lot of great people in this church. It's really cool, Amity. You'll like it. Um, Linda, thank you. God bless you. And I did, by the way, I did tell them that with them leaving, they have to send, for each of them, they have to send us six replacements. So we're waiting for that. Any time will be good. Let's take a moment and just kind of silence our hearts before God and reflect on what's been shared and maybe what God might want to say today.
God, there are so many people in this congregation whose stories are like Rick and Linda's. People you've brought here, people who've been touched through the other people in this church in so many ways. People you've used in so many ways, some of them very quietly in the background. Some of them people that others know. Lord, we thank you that when you called us to be your people, you didn't call us to be your person. You called us to be your people. Not just as an individual out there all by ourselves trying to serve God, but part of the family of God, part of the community of faith. We thank you that we have the privilege of being part of the family of God here at First Baptist Church. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you can put your bulletin away if you're trying to follow the scriptures that are there. I ended up changing it again this week uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, and I don't know if I'll ever get around to that one. One I skipped a few weeks ago is coming up, but I don't know about that one. We'll see. But I, just, I, I was just really struck uh, by the end of the week this week with some things I saw. And, and somehow I thought... Um, it'd be useful for us to think about them, to address them today. I mentioned earlier that Haiti just had their earthquake with, you know, the 7.2 earthquake and over 300 people killed. But there's also recently been earthquakes reported in Japan and Alaska and Pakistan and Iran, Japan, more places around the globe. Um, volcanoes. There's three Volcanoes erupting right now in the Aleutian Islands. And then there's others that we've heard about, Indonesia. And Hawaii's had that one that went through in Iceland and Japan recently. And Russia has got one going. And then there's the rains. Of course, a few years ago, we had the flood. But I don't know if you saw about the recent rains and then some flooding back east and up north a little bit. And, and of course, Germany and Belgium had terrible floods over there. You read the news, watch the news. Every day there's an update on the wildfires out west, massive wildfires, and, uh, and excessive drought. And they say that the wildfires are impacting the air quality out there, which is causing people to have lung problems, which makes them more susceptible to higher cases of COVID. But interestingly enough, I had somebody here in town that I visited with the other day that has some uh, lung problems who says, I don't go outside because the second I can go outside, I can, I can tell that smoke from out there still. It affects my breathing here. Um, hurricane season's coming. Right? The hurricane that was down there, what was it, Fred? Uh, apparently it's not gonna, gonna be a wave instead of a hurricane, maybe. Um, but they got a new tropical storm, Grace, it's coming in, and poor Haiti, coming right toward Haiti right after the earthquake. And then there's the pandemic virus that we're dealing with, COVID. Started out as COVID, then it was COVID with the Delta strain. And for a while it was COVID with the Brazilian strain and the South African strain and the British strain and a couple strains in, in LA and or California and, and another one over in Vietnam and now another one in China. And now it's not just the Delta virus, now it's the Delta Plus, which is even more contagious. And then there's also concern about the Lambda variant, which comes out of Peru and has come up here. However, they're not so worried about it because they think it's going to stand a chance against the Delta. Well, that's not really good news, right? I mean, that's tough stuff. And the article that I read that talked about some of these also said that they're anticipating this virus is going to continue to change and morph. And there's going to come a point where it's immune to some of the vaccines, and it's going to have to continually be changing and developing. And then I read yesterday a really sad article um, over in Britain. Did you see about the mass killing in Britain? First one they've had in a number of years. A young 22-year-old man um, who was frustrated with life and trying to get ahead, and I don't remember what all, it didn't, he didn't, they didn't give all the motives, but 22 years old, in his house, went and shot his mother, who was about 50, then stepped outside and, 
killed a toddler that was walking by, about four-year-old, and, and the toddler's dad, who was 40-some, and then walked down the street and shot a number more before finally killing himself, um, all using a, a pump-action shotgun, supposedly. And then this morning and last night, I saw another article that, uh, that, that the National, or the Homeland Security people have raised the terror threat because there's been, uh, what do they call it, chatter coming out of Al-Qaeda and out of Yemen uh, that uh, in, in uh, looking forward to the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks in New York. And that was the first time it occurred to me that this is going to be the 20th anniversary. But apparently they've been thinking about it, so there's concern there. And then all the troubling articles about Afghanistan and Taliban and Kabul and Kandahar and all the lost ground there. And then you look at our government and all the dysfunction in Washington and look across the country and all the stuff in the streets that's in such disarray. <coughs> Good news everywhere, huh? What a world, right? What a mess we're in the midst of. What a hard time to live. What, what I'm saying. And there have been other hard times. Uh, you know, some of you grew up in homes that have been through the Depression or been through the World War II or, and, or you know, were involved in the tail end of it or whatever. Um, that was a hard time. Vietnam War was a hard time and the streets of America were a mess. But it just seems like right now so many things coming together in so many places. And maybe it's because we have the Internet and we have all this instant news and the 24-hour news cycle. Maybe that's part of it. But even if it isn't part of it, the reality is these things are going on. It's a tough time. It's a hard time. And it can be pretty overwhelming. It can get you pretty down if you let it. I mean, I really feel for those women in Afghanistan. But what can I do, right? It's hard to know. The people in Haiti, well, yeah, okay, so I can donate to one great hour sharing. That helps, that does some of that can go to Haiti. There, there's ways I can help there. And the stuff in Congress, that, that regardless which side it is, and all the mess going on, I, I can always write to my politicians or call their office, express my voice. So there is something maybe I can do there, whether they listen or not. You know, with the various disasters, like the wildfire, like the, like the town in California, that the whole town was burned up, right? I, mean, I could donate to relief efforts or, or to uh, some of the groups, or I could even, if you're in Nebraska, I could even join the disaster work team, the men's disaster work team that goes to some places and helps with things. But there's really not much I can do about the volcanoes, right, or the earthquakes. Um, not much I can do to stop the land of Arian from being formed and heading out with more of the COVID. Not much I can do, I don't think, about the mass shootings that we continue to see, except continue to preach peace, and try to help people get along. And I have no idea what I can do about the Al-Qaeda threats coming out of Yemen. We, we live in a situation where it's hard to know. And, and I, I sat and I, I began thinking of all these different things and, and all the things that happened, and I, and, and I had an odd phrase pop up one day, um, and I don't remember if it was a news article that I was reading or if I heard somebody talking about some of these disasters, but they, they referred to some of these things as being of biblical proportions. I'm going, well, that's probably not a bad comment. Listen to Revelation chapter 9, if you will. Um, Revelation talks about the time toward the end and all the plagues that come and all the, all the ways that God pours out judgment and, and deals to protect his people and so on. So this kind of picks up in the middle of the sum of it. Revelation 9 verse 18. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed. I don't know how many people are being killed by you know, the, the pandemic we've got, but it's a pretty significant number. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and smoke and sulfur. That, what is fire, smoke, and sulfur? What's that sound like? 
volcanoes, wildfires, right? Coming out of their mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouths and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents with heads. And by means of them they wound the rest of mankind. Who were not killed by these plagues. Did not repent of the works of their hands. Nor give up worshipping demons. Nor idols of gold and silver. And bronze and stone and wood. Which cannot hear or see or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, or their sorceries, or their sexual immorality, or their thefts. You know, in all the news articles that you've read with all the disasters just in our country, have you seen any of them that say, and so the whole city repented of the evil that they were doing? There's been a national call for our people to repent. These things have served as a wake-up call, and, and because, because of all these terrible things that happened, we were now examining our own lives and saying, God, how have we gotten out of your way? We, we've come to repent. Have, has anybody heard that anywhere? I haven't either. Instead, I hear more like this. They did not repent of all the things that they'd done. Well, unless you think that's it, let's go on in Revelation 16, verse 8. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were scorched by the fierce heat, as in a drought, and places where air conditioning didn't cover it. And how did they respond? Look at what it says. And they cursed the name of God, who had power over these plagues. They did not repent and give him glory. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in anguish and cursed the God of heaven for their pain and sores. They did not repent of their deeds. You may think, well, wait, nobody's cursing God about this. Well, have you ever heard anybody say to you, well, if there's really a God, why does he let all these terrible things happen? You know, what kind of God would do that? That's pretty close to cursing God. It's certainly blaming God. You know, if this God exists, look at what he's let happen. And again, they did not repent of their deeds. Interesting, isn't it? In the Old Testament, the, the book of Judges especially, you can see it, but lots of places. But the book of Judges, the nation would, would come together, they'd get off track. They'd do things they shouldn't be doing. God would raise up a judge like Gideon. He'd get them back on track. And then Gideon would die, and then they'd get off track again. And, and as a result, then God would send things to wake them up. Things like invading armies or droughts or whatever. It happens again with, with uh, Elijah when he announces to King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, there's going to be a drought for three years because you guys are doing evil. You're not doing what God wants. And then he disappears. And what's interesting in that passage, and you can read it in 1 Kings 18, but what's interesting is when Elijah shows back up again, Ahab says to Elijah, well, there you are, you troubler of Israel. And Elijah says, I'm not the troubler. You are. Why? Because he didn't repent. He didn't get, see these things as a way to bring you back to God. And even when God demonstrated his power with Elijah there on Mount Carmel and rained down the fire and took the offering and the pagan God couldn't do it, Jezebel didn't repent. She got mad about it. How dare you insult our religion? How dare you insult our gods? How dare you kill people who are trying to do good even though they're serving the wrong God? How dare you do that? And so she goes to try to kill Elijah. She doesn't repent. Matter of fact, the story of Israel ends up that they didn't repent enough times that eventually God allowed the Assyrians and Babylonians to carry them off into captivity until they would begin to understand. Revelation 16 continues down in verse 17. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne saying, it is done. And there were flashes of lightnings, rumblings from the throne saying, it is done. Oh, I'm sorry. And there were flashes of lightnings, rumblings, peals of thunder and a great earthquake such as there had never been since man was on the earth, so great was that earthquake. 
The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And God remembered Babylon the great to make her drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. And every island fled away, and no mountains were to be found. And great hailstones, about 100 pounds each, fell, fell from heaven on the people. And they cursed God for the plague of the hail, because of the plague was so severe. Again, they didn't repent. And you know, in a lot of countries of the world, when they read a passage like that, you know who they identify as Babylon? The United States. Because of what they see in our movies, because of the great wealth, because of ships that come and go, and because of the kind of uh, immoral lifestyle they see depicted so much in our country and the, and the abuse of power and wealth that they perceive. They did not repent. I don't know what you hope happens in all this mess that we're experiencing in our world right now. And I don't know what you've been praying for. You've heard me a number of times here praying that God would turn his hand on the plague, on the pandemic, and guide people to solutions. But where are people looking for those solutions? The doctors, the scientists, the politicians. But God has the power over the plague. If, if, this, if this pandemic has taught us anything, it should teach us we don't have the power we think we have. I mean, think how well the world was going. Not, not, I mean, I know there were problems, but in terms of just the economy and business and stuff, and, and, and advances with the rockets and so on. I mean, so many, so many advances over the last 15, 20 years, things that have happened. But then a little microscopic virus started out in a country clear on the other side of the globe. And now, so much of the globe is shut down. We don't have as much power as we think we do. In these times, we should be reminded of that and, and realize it's to God we need to turn, and to God we need to help others turn. You know, I don't know if this message is about us or if it's about people out there, but somewhere, somehow, with all these things happening, somebody needs to realize we need to turn to God. And part of how that happens is a verse that's very famous, and you, you could all probably even quote it to me, from 2 Chronicles 7.14, where God talks about, as a church, what is our role? And, you know, when there's all the things we can't do, this is important to hear. If my people, who are called by my name. It doesn't matter what the politicians do. It doesn't matter what the people who don't believe do. It doesn't matter what the economists do. It doesn't matter what, what the virus does. It doesn't matter, none of, if, 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 if my people, this is addressed to us as the people of God, if my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, so whatever wicked ways we might have, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. You may think that there's nothing you can do about the disasters around the world. Or there's nothing you can do about the pandemic. And maybe you're afraid of what's going to happen after the 90,000 gathered to hear Garth Brooks and now dispersed back all around. But there is something you can do as the people of God. I encourage you to join us. Humble yourself and pray. Seek God's face in this time. And let him show you things where you need to repent. The very things that those people in Revelation refuse to do. Maybe there's just little things in our lives that we need to turn from. But whatever they are, let God show them to us and turn from them. And God will hear. And he'll cleanse us from the sins of our lives and and. He'll heal our land, not just us, the land. I think the answer to a lot of the world's problems right now is a new, fresh outpouring of the Spirit of God across our nation, across the world. And I'm looking for it to happen. I believe it will. I believe it's time. Join me in prayer, will you? Almighty God, we live in the midst of a lot of troubling things. 
And yet, in the midst of them, we walk with the God of all power and peace. Lord, when we find we can't do much, give us the courage to do what we can. Help us as we seek to have our own houses in order and to come before you to intercede for our nation and for the world that somehow, in the midst of tragedy after tragedy and disaster after disaster, threat after threat, somehow in the midst of it, people will find a way, instead of cursing God, to turn to God, to turn to you, to repent, to find that all of this has been done as a, something that you can use to get our attention. Lord, I don't know whether it's man's fault or Satan's fault or how all the dynamics of it work, but I know this. There's nothing you can't use for your glory. You did it in the cross. God, do it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing song maybe fits. I have to fit the other message too, but maybe it fits today. May all those who follow us find us faithful. Stand with me if you would. Let's sing together. Simple little chorus, number 456, if you're using a hymn.
reported Joel's head. Oh dear. That's why Richard